Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch today's video. If you do love handbags and other luxury items as much as I do, please help me out. Please hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out. I am trying to grow my channel and I would greatly appreciate it. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. So you've asked and I'm gonna answer. I've decided to do my first question and answer because I've seen other YouTubers do it and I think they get interesting questions and it gives me a new insight into who they are, how they think and what they love and what they don't love. So I asked on uh, my socials for some questions and I got quite a few. So I'm gonna go through them one by one and answer these questions. I did try to organize them so there wouldn't be too much overlap because some people ask similar things. So I've tried to like lump those questions together. We'll see if I was successful at that. I did not sleep well last night, so I am a little bit tired today, but it is a Sunday and I'm just relaxing. So I just decided to go ahead and film this. So without any further ado, let's get started. So White Wick 13 asked, where am I from? Where did I go to school? And what do I do for an occupation? So I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. When I was 13, my family moved to Madison, Wisconsin. After that, I went to school at the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. After school, I stayed about seven years and then I moved to Seattle, Washington and then to San Francisco and now I am in Palm Springs. So I've gradually moved to warmer weather and I don't think I could get much hotter than I am here. Um, occupation, I work in finance. Uh, so there you have it. Thank you for the question. Now I've got a few from LV Lux Delight. Uh, what is your favorite fashion house and why? Well, that's kind of a two-part question because there's, there's definitely one that's my absolute favorite and there's one that's my favorite for a simple reason. My absolute favorite is Christian Dior. Hands down, bar none, I really don't understand I don't understand what the hoopla is about Chanel at all. I can understand the hoopla around Hermes. I don't understand why there isn't so much hoopla around Dior. To me, it is the most beautiful, the most artistic brand. Everything they do is a work of art from the you know fabric, uh, embroidered bags, to their leather bags, to their shoes, to their fashion, everything. It is just beautiful. There is nothing I see from Dior that I don't think is stunningly beautiful. And I cannot say the same for any other fashion house. If I was a woman, it is likely that most of everything in my collection would be Dior. Their bags, at least on the women's side, I'm just not crazy about many bags on the men's side, honestly. Um, but the bags on the women's side are by and large just too feminine for me. My like ultimate dream bag, and I will try to put a picture of it right here, would be the Lady Delight. And the same reverse Tawadajoui print as my book tote there. I just got back from running some errands. Um, but it's just too feminine and with the charms, I just know I would spend heaps of money on it and not get any use out of it. Uh, but Dior, hands down, like a lot of my female YouTuber friends don't have Dior in their collection. And you know, we all like different things, of course. Uh, but it just kind of amazes me because like I said, if I was a woman, it would be Dior, 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 Dior. But because of the lack of options for me, Louis Vuitton really is the, the, the house that I have the most stuff from and the house that I'm most attracted to in that like unisex sense. The only bag I have from Vuitton that wasn't in the women's section was the Pharrell Speedy 25. I don't know why that's feminine and, or excuse me, why 
Pharrell's drop is masculine and on the men's side and the regular speedies are feminine and on the women's side. I don't get it, but I do feel like with Louis Vuitton, they offer a lot more that is unisex, in my opinion, than Dior does. Uh, she's also, she has some travel questions and I love travel, so I'm gonna ask this. Um, she said, how many states in the United States have you been to? So I had to figure this out because when I was in my late teens, I was in a drum and bugle corps. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's like a marching band, but it was it's brass instruments only, percussion, and color guard. And you do a 10 and a half to 11 and a half minute program. It's judged, it's very complex. You spend the entire summer rehearsing 40, 50 hours a week and competing and it all uh, culminates at the world championships and the group I was in won the world championships one year. So that was probably the most exciting night in my life. But because of that and other travel, but mainly because of that, I have been to 43 states. So I've only not been to Alaska, Hawaii, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. So, you know, that gave me really the travel bug, just traveling around the country all summer and competing and performing. Uh, was really fun and really exciting. Um, she asked also, how, have you visited any countries outside of the US? Yes, primarily Europe. I do like to go every summer to Europe. The only summer in the last 10, 12, 15 years or so that I haven't been was 2020 uh, due to the pandemic. Um, I've also been to Mexico several times. I've been to Belize and I've been to Japan. Um, every summer I try to go to Vienna and that is my favorite city in the world. I absolutely love it and I think about it all the time and I miss it and I didn't go last summer, we went to Paris instead. So that is where I like to go every summer and kind of rope um, a couple other places in. I am not a day in and day out type of traveler. I like to spend a lot of time and I like to intimately get to know cities. So I've been to Berlin, London, Paris heaps of times as well as, as Prague and Budapest. And those are the kind of main cities I keep going back to because like I said, I don't wanna be somewhere who's been, someone who's been a thousand different places but doesn't know any of them because when, in my opinion, when you travel and you go to Europe and you spend two weeks and you go to 12, 10, 12 different cities, like you really don't get to know it. Um, so that's just the way I travel. Agent Bag Reviews loved this question. What is your relationship? What is your relationship to Queen Elizabeth II? I see you have several portraits of her. Usually my camera's facing this way, so you can see in my videos there is a portrait of Queen Elizabeth II, and I believe that must have been around the time of her coronation in 1953, when she would have been, I believe, 26. 27, 26, 27. Um, so I actually got that from a good friend I lived with for a good number of years. Uh, she had that and when she left in 2020, she did not want it so I gladly snapped it up. My relationship is really historical although I have a tremendous amount of respect for that woman she did her duty for 70 years. She understood that the great privilege she was born into also came with a great amount of responsibility. And she did her duty uncomplainingly for 70 years. And to me, that is really amazing and really wonderful. And especially in the light of what troublemakers Andrew and Fergie were and Charles and Diana were, both of them, and Meghan and Harry. You know, that's what upsets me so much about Harry. Not so much Meghan, because she was not born into this. But you're born into something like this, 
you get all this privilege and wealth because of your sheer dumb luck at birth and to to want that and not the responsibility I just don't think that's acceptable but I am a humongous history buff um, I studied history in college I love history and I love the history of the United Kingdom and particularly the monarchy I also am really versed in the Romanovs the Russian monarchy the Habsburgs the Austrian monarchy and the whole Ho Hohenzollern I hope I'm saying that right the Prussian slash German monarchy so it, it just fascinates me and I watch anything I can about monarchs and, and what their reigns were like and what what they did and what they stood for and I just like history overall so I have that portrait because I think it's a beautiful portrait I not a person like my friend was that I lived with or my mom who's Canadian hence the t-shirt I'm not a person who has affection for these people because I don't know them. I just find their stories and the history of the whole thing quite fascinating. Ed Braun asked, if you could only pick one bag to keep, which would you pick and why? And he asked another question I'll get to too. If I had to keep one bag it would probably be my pochette Matisse uh, because I just think it really is the best everyday bag and the reverse monogram goes with everything uh, and I just absolutely love that bag. Uh, so that would be the everyday bag I would pick, like a work travel bag hands down would be that one. And if I only could have two bags in my collection, it would be uh, those two. He also asked what bag would I give him, Winnie and Rakita. Um, the three of us are on a text thread and we talk all the time. So Rakita, um, Winnie's easy. Winnie is really easy. I would give her the Pharrell 25 blue and brown checkered speedy. I know how much she loves that bag. Um, for Rakita, I would probably I probably, oh, that's a tough one because I'm gonna get to her question. I knew she was gonna play with me and she played with me, but we're gonna get to her question in a bit. So let me think, I should have thought about this before. Um, for Ed, oh, I know, I would give Rakita my side trunk because I know she wants a side trunk because she's crazy. I'm gonna get to why she's crazy when I answer her question, but I'd give Rakita my side trunk and I would probably give Ed the book tote because he's got babies now. And so he can put a bunch of baby crap in that and tote that around and look fabulous. Saab guy asked, are there any bag brands you would not own? And is Hermes in my thoughts for the future? Bag brands I wouldn't own, and I'm actually gonna do a video on this because somebody asked me on Instagram why my collection is not very diverse. And I thought that was a really good question. And then they said, you know, do you have something against other brands? Well, the brand I can't see myself ever buying from is Balenciaga. I'm sorry, I haven't seen one freaking bag from them that isn't freaking ugly. It, it to me it is the ugliest most try hard desperate brand they try to be cutting edge and shocking and it backfired on them with that whole s m bdsm or whatever it is children's ad and i just think they're a really gross brand uh dolce and gabbana would be another one because i just don't like what they stand for and not they the company they dolce and they gabbana and the stuff they've done in the past is just despicable. Um, so I would never buy, ever buy from either of those two brands. Um, is Hermes in my thoughts for the future? Um, Kuwait, Saab guy asked that, and Kuwait Habibi also asked, what was my dream Hermes bag, size hardware leather? 
And then Daniel Melb also asked, would you ever buy Hermes and would you get a Bergen and Kelly? So those three all go together. I would say it's not in my thoughts because I just cannot fathom paying the prices. I would love to have a Birkin, even though the Kelly is my favorite Hermes bag. My dream Hermes bag, even though I just said I would buy a Birkin, but if, if I could have a Birkin and a Kelly, my absolute dream bag would be a Kelly, probably 35 in Cellier with oh my god it's oh god what's the cult what's the name of that hardware it's like silver but it's not silver oh my god the word escapes me i thought it began with a p palladium with palladium hardware and um in like a light blue or orange color that would be my dream hermes bag but only if i could also have a Birkin because I just think the Birkin is more practical than the Kelly. They're both hard to close everything up, but a Birkin you can at least fold the flap in and use it as an open tote, which I like. I think the Kelly looks ridiculous when people carry it and leave the flap open. Um, so that would be how or what I would want from Hermes, but I just you know, even if I had 10, 15, 20 grand to blow, I just can never see myself spending that much for one bag. And I know I have a collection that is worth more than probably two Hermes quota bags, but I would rather have several other bags um, that are much lesser priced than one or two Hermes bags. Um, David's Closet, this is no surprise. I knew he was gonna play with me too. He said, why do you insist on hating Prada so much? And I feel bad, like I don't actually hate Prada, but whenever, like, cause I text with him too, and like whenever he sends a Prada bag, like I throw up in my mouth a little bit, and then I'm like, oh, that's nice. I, no, I don't, it's not that I hate Prada, I don't, think their stuff is but ugly like I think Balenciaga and even Versace is but why I have an issue with Prada is that was probably the first luxury brand I ever knew anything about this must have been 10 11 12 years ago this woman I was working with um, she had a Galleria a Prada Galleria bag and I thought it was like the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. And I was like, I want this. Cause back then I didn't need to carry a laptop so I could have any bag for work. And I was like, I want this. And we went to, I think it was Neiman Marcus. Um, Cause there's no Prada boutique in San Francisco. I can't remember if there was one back then. I, I mean, this was so long ago before I really had much interest in this, but I, we went to Neiman Marcus and the same stuff I saw then, I feel like I see now. I feel like, pro and maybe this is just ignorance to the brand, but I feel like nothing ever changes with Prada. It's all just solid color bags with that little triangle and the nylon bags. And like, I just feel like everything looks the same as it did 13, 12, 11, whenever it was years ago, I was trying to think exactly what year this was and I really couldn't. Um, so I guess that's my issue with Prada. And I just, yeah, I still think the Galleria bag is beautiful, um, but I don't know. I, I've carried solid colored bags my whole life. So maybe I'm just still in a phase where I want shit like that, you know, or Louis Vuitton, Monogram, stuff that's not solid. So I will never rule out Prada, but those are probably the reasons why I bag on it so much and the fact that they have an outlet. And I just think having an outlet diminishes your brand. Um, there's premium outlets like 30 minutes north of here and like every house I can think of literally, except of course Hermes, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton and Dior have outlet stores there. and. Prada, 
Gucci and Coach, the Coach outlet is massive, full of stuff. But those three brands make stuff specifically for the outlet and I just think that really diminishes your brand. And it's kind of, I don't know if it's necessarily dishonest, but it's deceiving because you go in and we all know how outlets work and you pick up that Prada bag and it's like $2,000 and it's crossed out and it says 800. So, you know, the unknowing person would be like, oh gosh, I'm getting this $2,000 bag for $800. No, you're getting an $800 bag for $800. It's a version of a boutique bag made with lesser quality materials, lesser quality craftsmanship, and I just, the other boutiques, they sell like, like Longchamp, it's packed. They have tons of stuff in the Longchamp outlet, but it's all boutique stuff. It's colors from last season, things that didn't sell. Um, you know, Celine, the store barely has anything in it. Fendi barely has anything in it. I mean, yeah, they barely have anything in it. You're not gonna really hit a lot when you go into stores like that. And Belmont, same thing. YSL, Chloe, Valentino, it's all like Givenchy. They don't have a lot of stock in them because these are not items that are made for the boutique. Gucci has boutique and made for outlet items. But I just think like, I get it, you're making your products more accessible to more people, but it cheapens your brand. Um, so here's Miss Silly Rakita. Why do I pick the worst size of handbags? And some of you may have seen our little fun little tiff. We're good, good friends. I love her to death. Over the Pochette Matisse and over whether the Speedy 25 or 30 is better. And she hates the Pochette Matisse and thinks the 30 is better than the 25. But it's funny because she was texting us last last weekend all about the, the I think it's the multi Pochette Essessois. And I'm like, girl, that holds less than the Pachette Matisse. Are you crazy? Or the side trunk, I know she wants that. Well, if I get the multi Pachette Essessois, like there's situations where I can use that, where I don't carry it all, don't need to carry a lot. And I said, well, you could use your Pachette Matisse in those situations, that holds more. So she's just being silly, but you know, her math doesn't add up. Like. You can't think the Pachette Matisse is unus unusable because it doesn't hold everything you need and then get a side trunk or Pachette Essessois that holds less. Um, so you're, you're funny, Rakita. Um, oh gosh, I... Abs Indian Notes Official. Has working from home made you gravitate away from certain bags that you currently own or would potentially purchase? Absolutely. So my bag journey, you know, back in the day I had one big Samsonite messenger bag I used for work and I had a teeny tiny, well not teeny tiny, a much smaller version of that same bag that I used for travel. And I used those for years and years and I didn't need to bring a laptop to work or tow a laptop back and forth and then the pandemic sent us all home and then we started going back to the office a few days a week. So I was toting a laptop back and forth. So I had to use big bags and I predominantly used my Louis Vuitton on the go, a Tumi bag I had, and the Saint Laurent Rive Gauche tote as work bags. But now that I have moved and I am mostly remote and I go back to San Francisco one week every quarter, I sold my on the go and my re my Saint Laurent because there's no way I would ever choose those. No way, no day would I ever choose those over the book tote. So I have that and my carry all, which was the duffel carry all from Louis Vuitton that are kind of my travel bags. Uh, and, and that's all I need. So my focus has really shifted to everyday bags because I use those all the time. So when I was going to work more regularly, I would definitely buy bigger bags as well as everyday bags, but now I want everyday bags that I can use uh, in 
any situation, even travel if you're traveling lightly or work. Um, Kathy Carroll 3186, what made me start my YouTube channel? What was the first handbag I ever bought and who would you love to collaborate with that you haven't? Well, what made me start my channel is, like I said, I had those messenger bags and my first ever video was on the Troubadour Adventure Tote and that bag came across my Instagram feed and I was like, oh, how cool. And it was marketed as a men's bag or unisex maybe, but it was a man in the ad carrying it. And I was like, oh, that looks really beautiful and that's interesting and it's different. And I, it's like nothing I ever have. I'm going to order it. And it was like 300 something. And when I got it, I was quite disappointed in the construction and in the materials. And when I was thinking about buying it, there were no videos on it because even before I started my channel and still today, like anything I'm going to buy, or spend a good amount of money on, I go to YouTube and watch a bunch of reviews, read reviews online, things like that. And there was just really nothing out there. So I thought I'm just gonna do a video and I thought that would be it. And then, you know, a couple people watched and commented and I was like, oh my gosh, like people actually watched. So then I just, the hunt began, like I didn't like that bag and I sold it, okay, what's next? So you can see the project, progression of my handbags um, if you you know scroll through my videos from the start to today and where I was and what I was buying and where I went to and where I am now um, but that's why I started it so it's been a really great journey ever since um, the first handbag I ever bought um, gosh I mean I've carried bags for as long as I could remember because I hate putting stuff in my pockets but if I had to say the first luxury everyday handbag I ever bought was my reverse monogram Pichette Matisse. I remember that was my first time ever in Louis Vuitton and I was so nervous um, and it was just really thrilling um, to buy that. Who would I love to collaborate that I haven't collaborated with yet? God, that's an interesting question. Um, maybe... Uh, Oh my God, Cassie Thorpe. Like, I love Cassie Thorpe. I mean, I love all my YouTube friends too, um, but I would, what my dream video would be, would be to like sit next to her in her closet and like pick, like, like her mom did with her recently, like rate her recent purchases or pick my five favorite and five worst least favorite items like her fiance has done. I just think she is just so sweet and so enjoyable. And when I first started this, you know, I contacted her on Instagram with a question and she was so kind and wrote back right away. Dale's Addiction did that too. And they were the first YouTubers I ever reached out to. And, um, I love them both because you know they're busy and they have a lot of subscribers and they both took time to answer my questions which I just thought was really really sweet my friend Nicole said if I could purchase only handbags from one house for the rest of my life which would you choose and that would be Dior for reasons I said above so clearly I didn't lump that question together Fuchsia Floyd, do you have any upcoming travel plans? Is there a trip to Vienna? Yes and yes. I am going to San Francisco in June for a week and then in August I am going to Vienna for like eight, nine days. Um, I'm super excited about it. Um, I wasn't going to go this year just to save the money and then last weekend I was watching a documentary on the Habsburg monarchy and they most of it was the the narrator i guess you know talking about history and, and and a lot of it was vienna footage and i just got really sad i was like oh my god if i wait till next year it'll be three years i can't do that so i booked last weekend with my mom so i'll be going back and i'm really really excited about that winnie b do I have any siblings? Yes, I have a sister who is four years younger than me. What luxury YouTuber would you like to have their collections? Um, 
I would probably absolutely, and I'm sure this is going to come as no surprise, Meredith's, 100,000% Meredith's. She has an amazing collection. Like, a lot of it's just not me, but she has an amazing collection, and I could definitely take that collection, keep what I want from it, and sell what I didn't want, and buy a ton of bags I do want, and I just think she has an amazing collection. Then she got silly and said, and said if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? Um, probably, I would say, get your damn eyes checked, Winnie. Um, and so, no, I wouldn't hold it against you, but maybe your husband would, and maybe you need to go to the eye doctor. Uh, no. Um, what was your first luxury purchase? It was a, the Rive Gauche Saint Laurent Toad in Paris. Uh, that was in 2021. That was the first time I ever went into a luxury boutique anywhere. And um, I bought that in Paris, but it's since moved on. If money was no object, what would you get? I would get a Louis Vuitton trunk hundred percent and that would be my coffee table like I would get glass cut and made for the top of it and I just think their trunks are just the epitome of beauty and that would be it um Dawn loves couture favorite foods favorite fragrances and what do I like best about where I live um favorite foods I would probably say Indian is probably my favorite oh my god and I have not had an Indian in over a year I have not had Indian since before I moved so I've got to correct that but I absolutely love Indian food it is just so flavorful and so good and I love the sauces and the bread oh my god Paneer tiki masala, samosas, naans. Ooh, yeah, love Indian food. Fragrances, you know, I'm not really a fragrance person. I'm a little bit sensitive to fragrances. Um, you know, I did a video on buying the Louis Vuitton Pacific Chill. I'm not so sure that was a good idea. Um, because for other people to smell it, I have to spray on an amount that is overpowering for me. So I don't do that. When I wear it, I spray a little bit and I can just very lightly smell it. And that's what I like, but no one else can. Um, so I'm probably done with fragrances, but I also love Joe Malone, my friend that I lived with in San Francisco for 10 years. She loved Joe jo Malone and Oh my God, it would smell so good. Like those fragrances I, I really actually like. Um, what do I like best about where I live? The heat, the warmth. I mean, it is warm all the time. It is hot for a lot of the year. Uh, it's not so pleasant being outside when it's in the upper 90s, low 100s um, for long periods of time. In the shade, it's okay. In the sun, it's, it is really challenging but I love that I always am warm. I hate being cold. Um, Birkin Boy, oh, I'm so excited. Birkin Boy is gonna start a channel finally. I mean, God, I can't remember the first time I interacted with him, but I, I felt like I was like hounding him because I'd be like, you need to do a channel, you need to do a channel. Why don't you have a channel? Same with you, Sob Guy. And He's finally said he's doing a channel. So if you all don't know Birkin Boy, like he's on Instagram, he has amazing collection. He's been on Winnie's lives and I think on Jack's Bag Attacks lives. Um, such a nice guy and I just cannot wait for him to start his channel. But he said, what do you think the max amount you'd spend on a bag is? That's an interesting question because I remember when I started this and I had made a comment on Joshi Michael's video, something about spending, like I couldn't believe I spent such and such a money and he said, oh yeah, that's how everyone starts. Like you can't believe you spend, you know, 2000 on a bag and then before you know it, you have an $8,000 Chanel bag in your collection. So some of the bags I bought, I'm already like, it makes me a little bit like, Ugh, like almost sick thinking about the money I spent. Um, I probably, 
I probably would say, you know, the most I would spend if I had unlimited resources would be like the $5,600 on the Dior Lady D Light in the reverse Trois de Jouis um, because I just think it's a beautiful bag. So if I had unlimited resources, I wouldn't care if I carried it. Like it would sit in my house in various places and I could marvel in its beauty. He also asked, why did I decide to rid my collection of coach robes? But if I kept any, do I still wear them at all? I had the regular robe, which is a size 30 that I got made and, you know, create your own where you pick the colors and the hardware and all that stuff. And then I had two Rogue 39s. I forgot to mention at the top of this video, work bags. I also used those Rogue 39s as work bags because they were great work bags. Um, I still have the made to order one in the 30 size. I got rid of the 39s just again because I don't have needs for a big bag anymore um, except when I travel. And the 30 I love. It is one of my favorite bags. I love it so much. I don't carry it enough. I am not a fan of Coach in general as a brand because I'm not crazy about 99% of their designs. But the Rogue bag is the one Coach bag that I absolutely love and I definitely want to have more in my collection. I would love to have a few 25s and some more 30s. Um, Candy, can I recommend a Dior bag that's easy to carry and not too heavy? Yes, I like the Small Camp. I think it's the Small Dior Camp is a good bag. Um, it holds about what the Bichette Matisse holds, so I can get everything I need in it. And I'm also going crazy, 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 crazy over the new Vibe bag. I will try to put a picture here, but oh my God. God, like I can't stop thinking about it. And to me, it reminds me, it is not like a Boston bag or a speedy silhouette, but it reminds me, or it doesn't remind me, because it's not, it doesn't have the same silhouette, but it is very similar in its functionality with the top handles and the shoulder strap and the lock. So speedy lovers, and I know you are candy, like, the vibe bag and there's two sizes like that is probably your best bet our treaties 217 which which bag that i purchased which bag i which bag that you've purchased is the best bang for the buck um i would probably say with that one my pharrell speedy 25 that would be in the running for the Pochette Matisse if I only had to keep one bag like I answered above. Um, and it's so much better than the regular Monogram Speedy 25s and so it's worth the additional price. And I absolutely love it and it carries so much. Um, so that's probably the best bang for the buck and if they did that bag in the Monogram, I would be in heaven because I'm thinking of selling my monogram Speedy with Candy because she is doing a reselling now and I just, I don't like it anymore because the canvas just feels so thin and not luxurious at all compared to the Pharrell Speedy. Shopping Savage, Shop, Shopping Savage said, how is the dating scene in Palm Springs? I wouldn't know, I don't date. Um, so. I don't know, like, this may sound weird, but sometimes I'm, like, I'm a person that believes things are meant for people, certain things are meant for people, and certain things aren't meant for people. I've had, you know, a tremendous amount of blessings in my life. I have, you know, beautiful bags, I travel, I've lived in amazing places, I've met amazing and wonderful people. But I just, like, it's really bizarre to say this and it was really bizarre to feel it but I've always felt in my life that that wasn't meant for me um, it was very difficult when I was younger so I had a lot of disastrous relationships because I was so desperate for it and now that I'm older I'm not um, if I met somebody I meet somebody I would not turn down somebody that I found interesting 
but I'm not really looking and I'm pretty happy and content actually being single. My life is my life and I only have to consider myself and my cat because I got to take care of her. Um, and you know, I like animals more than people, like in general, like there's a lot of good people out there. There's a lot of good people on YouTube, a lot of good people watching this video. I'm not saying that, but I don't know. I love animals more than people. They don't disappoint you. So I hope I'm not bitter. I'm not, I'm not sad. I'm not bitter. It's just a matter of fact, you know, how many times do people say, why me, when something bad happens in their life, but no one says, why me, and cries about it, you know, when they get to go to Dior and buy a bag, or they get to board a plane and go to Vienna, or they get the job they want, or they live in a nice apartment. So, you know, I'm, I'm a lucky one. I lucked out in this life. I'm blessed. I'm one of the few lucky ones. So, I'm, I'm fine. Um, last question, Yoda. We know you have a cat that you love her dearly. I do. Do you like dogs? Yes, I like all animals. I was extremely upset Friday morning, and Winnie and Rakita know this, because I woke up and there was a mouse on my bedroom floor. I have never seen a rodent in this house, and I thought it was dead and when I went to scoop it in a Ziploc bag, I noticed I was breathing and I was very, very upset about it. Um, I lined a tish or I lined a box, like one of my luxury boxes, like that is in the garbage now, but I lined it with tissue and I put it in there with strawberry slices and water and sunflower seeds and I was really hoping like it would come to and I'd be able to release it outside and it died like seven hours later. Um, but I love all things. I'm not a vegetarian. I do try to be, I only eat fish and chicken. I do not eat beef and pork. I don't value the life of anything over anything else. Um, but it is very rare that I even eat, uh, chicken or fish. Uh, those happens in, happen in situations where I might not like the vegetarian options or, um, there might not be uh, or if I go to someone's house for dinner I don't want them to do anything special so I eat what they serve um, and a lot of the times it's chicken and fish so that's good um, but yes I am a huge animal lover and do I enjoy being single or would you be open to married well I think I answered that yes I'd be open to it but yes I enjoy being single so with that, I've answered all the questions. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions. I really appreciate it. I got some good questions. And um, let me know your thoughts below and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.